And did any of what Miss Trelawney do help at all? No. If anything, things got worse. That night, Harry kept asking me if I was all right. And when I tried to talk to Harry, James would cut me off like he was afraid I'd infect our son with my fears or something. After we went to bed, I was woken up around two or three in the morning. At first, I didn't know what had woken me, but then I heard it. A child's laugh, and then something ran across the bed, over my legs, and down the hall. It felt like a cat, but we didn't have a cat. Are you sure you didn't imagine it? Um, perhaps you were still dreaming. No! It happened! I'm not crazy! I never said that you were crazy, Mrs. Potter. Please, tell me what happened next. I couldn't get back to sleep after that, and I was just watching the hallway, trying to convince myself that maybe some sort of animal got in the house when I heard Harry talking to someone. Who was he talking to? I don't know. I get up and walk to his bedroom, and I could hear laughter on the other side of the door, like Harry had a friend over. I tapped on the door and opened it, and saw Harry sitting up in bed. And I asked him what he was still doing up, and he said, Sorry, Mummy, Toby woke me up. I asked him if he could tell Toby that you need to go back to sleep because you have school in the morning. But Harry frowned at me and said, Toby gets mad when I tell him that. He does bad things when he's mad. I asked him what sort of bad things, and he climbed out of bed. He looked so little in his Power Rangers pyjamas, and he took down one of his superhero posters to show me what was behind it. Claw marks. Three claw marks gouged into the wallpaper, like a cougar or something. I asked Harry why Toby would do such a thing, and he said, Toby doesn't like it when I leave. He gets mad. I asked Harry if Toby had done anything else, and, and he nodded. When I asked him what he'd done, he pulled off his pyjama top and there were three identical scratch marks on his collarbone. I was horrified. I woke James up and showed him the claw marks on the wall in odd hurry and James exploded. He accused me of doing those things to our son and he wasn't going to let me abuse him anymore. He packed an overnight bag, took Harry and left. That must have been fairly traumatic for you. I don't understand why James would be so cruel. Ah, uh, after he left, things became much worse. The house creaked more than ever. Lights flickered and instead of the giggling, childlike voices, I heard angry screams like a child bitching a fit. I sat up in Harry's room all night. I couldn't leave. Whatever it was blamed me for making Harry leave and it scratched me like it did Harry. I didn't know what to do. I missed my son and husband, but I didn't want to lie about what I'd been seeing and experiencing either. The next day, James refused to answer my calls and texts and I walked around the house taking photographs of virtually everything, everywhere. There had been a disturbance. Did you see anything in your photographs? Yes. Apparitions. Orbs of light. Dark shadows. Everything I'd ever seen those paranormal experts talk about on telly. The strange thing is, I recognised the apparitions. You recognised it? Yes. It was a little boy. A little boy I hadn't seen in nearly 15 years. Who was it? My childhood friend. Severus. Severus, Tobias, Snape. Toby. Yes, I believe so. He was killed by a drunk driver when we were eight, and I was distraught. He was my best friend. His mother let me take a few of his toys as mementos, which I kept and gave to Harry. If you truly believe this was a genuine haunting, why did the spirit of your childhood friend appear only now, and why not before? I don't know. I asked the psychic and she said, Great upheaval, like a move, can sometimes jar awake spirits like that. 
Harry only started talking about his imaginary friend after we'd moved, so it seemed like the most likely answer. A few days later, James came back with two things for me. My son and divorce papers. He wanted sole custody. He was afraid that I would endanger Harry, but I was granted weekend visits. Harry was very upset. He didn't understand what was happening, and he and he cried a lot and asked me why his father had taken him away from me and from his friend. I tried to explain that his daddy was just scared for him, but it didn't help very much. And when it was time to go, Harry completely lost it, screaming at his father, crying harder than I'd ever seen him. And he managed to break away from his father's grip to run to me. I don't want to go, Mummy. Please don't make me go, he said. I want to stay here with you and Toby. The mention of his imaginary friend was the last straw for James and he dragged Harry bodily from the house. This spirit, ghost, whatever it was, destroyed my family in a few short months. I hated it. I hated that James wouldn't believe me. I hated that it attacked me and my son. I hated it all. I didn't leave the house for the whole week, and Toby was angry that James had taken Harry from him and took it out on me. He broke dishes, cracked mirrors. Light bulbs would explode at random. Any new photographs of our family that had been put up had every face save Harry's burned away. Not just scratched anymore. He wanted my son back.